Welcome back, guys. In my last video, I showed you how to get Olama running on a Raspberry Pi 5. And today we are taking it up a notch. I'm going to walk you through setting up Open Web UI, which is a slick browser-based interface that makes chatting with your AI models feel just like using ChatGPT. If you haven't seen that first video yet, I recommend checking it out first so you have the full background uh, for this video. I'll drop the link below, don't worry. And this one is all about taking your setup to the next level. It's self-hosted, it's private, and it runs entirely on your Raspberry Pi or in another Linux-based system you have deployed. So let's dive in. So the first thing we need to, to do is to install Docker. So if you go to the, uh, to the Docker page and, 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 and you follow the, the installation guides, you are going to find this, um, um, this section in which we are only going to um, install the repository uh, in, in our Raspberry Pi. And to do that, we obviously need to get a GPG kit when we need to actually um, set up our Linux-based system to, uh, to use that repository. The GPG key is, 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 is something that we are going to use inside Raspberry Pi to verify that everything that we are downloading for that repository is actually, is actually good to go. So they made it very easy to follow because the only thing that you need to do right here is to copy it and, and actually run it on, on the Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to, to do just that. So I'm already connected to the Raspberry Pi and I have already pasted it all in. So I'm just going to hit enter here. So looks good to me. Now let's go back to the guide and let's copy this link that we have here. So let's go back to the Raspberry Pi because I don't want to be asked anything, let's do it like this. So that went through. Um, the first time it did it, I thought, I thought there was some errors there, but after running it again, uh, I noticed that it was all completed. So um, no need to do anything else here. So the next thing we want to do is to um, is to configure a llama to accept remote connections, guys. So uh, remember uh, that we don't want to be on the Raspberry Pi each time we want to run an, an LLM model. And we also want to have a friendly interface to connect uh, to connect to the Raspberry Pi and to actually running these models. So what we are going to do right now is to actually prepare um, our, um, to prepare Olama to accept these remote connections because currently um, Olama is only going to be able to run locally. And if you try to connect to it remotely, it's simply going to refuse the connection or it's actually not to do anything, right? So we need to actually fix that first. And to do that, we need to edit the service. So if we go here, so sudo systemctl it's going to take us to the um, to the file where um, uh, to the file where, where Olama is actually configured. So um, I already did this. Um, I just want to make sure that it, it, it actually worked before, um, before, before doing that. But basically, the only thing that I added is these, li these two lines that you see here. So the only thing that I did is add this service statement here and the environment, mainly because I want, um, I want Olama to listen on any uh, 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 on any IP address, so that's why I configure it this way. So this is already done. I have already configured it, and the only thing that you need to do is to save your configuration, 
with control x you will go out of this uh, of this file and then we need to uh, stop and well basically you need to stop the service and start it again so i'm going to demonstrate how to do that even though i don't need to stem ctl and do a stop Lama. and then you go ahead and do and start then to make sure Olama is actually running with no issues, you go ahead and do this. And you can see that Olama is running right there. So there's no problems with it. And to make sure that it is actually listening on any IP address, um, what we need to do is to use this command. You can see here, although it doesn't quite say that this is Olama, you can see that, for example, this is the port that we configure well. This is the port that um, on which Olama listens by default, which is 11434. Now that it has like an asterisk in here, it means that, for example, it is listening on any on any IP address. It doesn't matter if it's, if it's um, an IPv4 or an IPv6 address. That's why it's showing an asterisk in here. So. Um, with this, I'm showing you that um, Olama is already, is already configured to accept remote connections. So, and the next thing we need to do is actually, um, is actually configure um, web UI. Well, more than configuring it, it's downloaded and configuring it. So um, let's go ahead and do that. And so, and we can do that with one command. Uh, it's more than one command. It's like a small script. So I'm going to paste it right now. Yeah, there it is. So um, with this command, we are launching the open web UI container with Docker. This command does a few important things. It runs the container in the background. So it keeps running without locking up our terminal. We are giving it a name, which is open web UI. So we can easily manage it later. Um, the double slash network host part allows it to communicate directly with other services on the Raspberry Pi, like Olama, without network issues. We're also mounting a volume so it can save setting as chat history, even if we restart the container. Then we set the environment variable to tell the web UI where Olama is running on this on this Pi at port 11434. And finally, we are using the restart unless it stopped. So it will automatically restart, uh, uh, restart up the reboot. So um, let's go ahead and hit enter here. Oh, okay. So yeah, of course, if I can, if I can do sudo, Wow, this actually took took some time to complete. It's still doing it. All right, let's pause here for a second. There's a mistake in this command. This version was based on an older setup and it doesn't mount the .olama directory correctly. That leads to a bad deployment with models don't load properly. Let me show you the fix command where, and we will continue from there. So, okay guys, so this is the right command. This is the one that addresses the issues that I was stating before. So once, uh, once we run this command, open web UI should be ready uh, and should be ready and integrated with Olama. So let's go ahead and do that. Cool. Um, because when we ran the previous command, it downloaded open web UI. It didn't need to do it again. So this is why this was much, much faster. So now let's uh, run some commands to make sure this is, um, um, this, is, this is running. So the first command that we're going to run is docker ps. Yeah, you can see that uh, open web UI is already there. The container is already there and running. And just to make sure that Olama is also, is also running, let's check. System CTL status open web UI. It's not open web UI, is it? 
mm, olema. Cool. Cool. Um, it seems that everything is running correctly. So the only thing that we are that we need to do right now is to actually browse um, browse the Raspberry Pi on 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 port eighty eighty, and we should be good to go. So let's do Control C here. Let's open our web browser, and then let's go to the IP address fifty three and. It's going to be open on port 8080. So, HTTP. So, because this is not the first time I'm actually logging into Open Web UI, it is not asking me to to create an account. But for you, it will. So, I'm going to log in with my credentials here. Cool. And there you go, guys. So. Um, with the first command that I was showing you before, the issue that we were having is that um, the models were not showing in here. So after I corrected the error with the second command that I show you, now all the um, all the models that I previously uh, pulled from uh, from Olama are already here. So yeah, Open Web UI has a lot of features. You can do many, many things with it. It's very flexible. You can create multiple accounts. And actually, you can also integrate it with ChatGPT. So for example, if you wanted to, um, if you wanted to use um, the latest model ChatGPT is using, you can actually integrate, uh, integrate um, the API here. You can configure the API right here. Um, this is something we can do, uh, but because this project is more focused on privacy, I'm not going to do that here. But let me know if um, if you want me to explore any other options that Open Web UI has. Open Web UI is very vast, it's very flexible. There are a lot of things you can do, and I will be more than happy to explore it alongside with you, so we can all learn together how to use it. Maybe not with the Raspberry Pi because we established that it is not that fast. Then maybe if I if it had like an external GPU, it could actually run much much faster. But for example, if you are deploying this on a Linux-based system uh, that has a GPU, this could potentially unlock many many possibilities for you. So um, I'm just going to show you how it runs in here, and I'm going to leave it like that. Um, but if you want me to explore this further, please leave a comment and tell me to do it. So right now, for example, the options that you have here is, uh, well, uh, the, the, the model that is selected here is, is Llama 3.2, which I believe is the best model that I, uh, from the ones that I have here, uh, because it, it is not that slow, and it actually has, um, uh, has well, uh, well, I think it's the most updated, to be honest. So um, let's see, let's ask something. Um, it also has some issues in here, so so let's click on here. Yeah, I'm not going to uh, to come up with anything right now. So let's click there, and this is actually running on the Raspberry Pi. So let's have a look. Uh, let's see if it is actually that fast. Another thing you can do is that you can actually uh, you can actually add more than one model here. So for example, if you want answers from two models simultaneously, you can do that. I'm going to try to run it here with the Raspberry Pi, but uh, I think it's going to take a while. And because I don't want to, um, because I don't want to, uh, to actually consume a lot of resources here, I'm just going to use Tiny Llama as a second, as a second model. Now, let's do something. Let's go ahead and check the, the processing on, on this Raspberry Pi. So what do I have here? Okay, so it's just showing me one CPU, but let's hit one. And if I hit one, you can see that uh, it's showing me all four CPUs. And because I think I think it hasn't, uh, it hasn't finished responding, it's still using all four CPUs in here. So not great. Well, it, it actually finished. So I'm not sure why it is, uh, it is actually consuming a lot of a lot of 
a lot of CPU in here. So you can see that I'm running 16 gigs of RAM. This is the available memory. And if you remember correctly, last time uh, on, on my last video, I was showing you how to configure the swap memory. You can see that the swap memory is also displayed in here. I have four gigs of RAM of swap memory, which I'm not using really. Um, you can see that it is using four gigs of um, four gigs of RAM, and I have 12 gigs available. So probably going with four gigs of RAM was was a stretch. So um, well, actually, this is the available memory. This is how much it is using. And this is uh, the free memory. So as you can see, the Raspberry Pi couldn't be any busier. So um, let's go ahead and try and try to um, ask a thing or two. Uh, so it's actually trying to uh, prompting the, the, the question to both models and see, let's see what happens there. So, okay, it wasn't that bad, but, um, you know, I wouldn't do this uh, on a Raspberry Pi. Another thing you can do with, um, with Open Web UI is actually upload files. So you can have as many files as you want. Uh, so, the, so the AI can actually uh, analyze them for you. So what do you think, guys? Um, let me know your thoughts about this integration with the Raspberry Pi. Now... I did my homework and did some more research about um, um, about um, about how to increase performance. And actually, one of the main factors here is that the Raspberry Pi doesn't have a GPU. So um, I've seen some guys actually uh, connecting a GPU to a Raspberry Pi. It's not the prettiest setup, but it works. It actually enhances the performance on the Raspberry Pi and and and. And, and makes it better for this type of this type of scenarios. Now, having said that, if you want to have a small factor server in which you can run these heavy models, I think the best way to go would be w with the Jetson or in Nano. Um, these were actually well, this these mini PCs actually include a, a GPU on them. So I think it's going to be more promising trying to run um, LLMs on these small factor PCs as well. Let me know if you if you want me to give them a try. Well, you can see that the price is it's not that cheap. It's $249. But for example, if you want to have something private, probably this is the best way to go. If you can invest $249 on this on this, type, uh, on this type of devices, your chances of getting a better performance than I do in this demo are going to increase. So let me know, guys, what do you think?